On Christmas Eve in 2014, um, I was in the middle of taking pictures and recording video for a worship set. A few weeks before that, uh, my dad had been going through some health problems. Um, they uh, had looked at him um, and they didn't see anything, so they sent him back home and they thought that, you know, everything was fine. Um, you know, we thought that our prayers had been answered. So on Christmas Eve 2014, um, I got a phone call um, from my mom saying that uh, my dad was in the ICU. By the time I got to the hospital, my dad uh, was already um, unconscious. He couldn't see anything. He couldn't talk. Uh, he was IV'd. And, and I just remember seeing this group of nurses rush in and start, you know, doing CPR. And I, you know, I heard a flat line and then, you know, they kept, they kept trying to bring my dad back to life. I remember telling my dad over and over, Jeremiah 29, 11, that, you know, God doesn't have plans to hurt you, that he has plans for you to prosper. And I just was thinking about that. And I said, God, like, this is not, this is not Jeremiah 29. This is not at all what I told my dad. This is not at all what I believed was going to happen. And I remember thinking, you know, God, you're a God of miracles. Just prove to me, God, just this once, and I will, I will change my life, and I will, I'll do everything I can. But that didn't happen that night. My dad passed away that night, and I, I didn't know who I was anymore. And so I immediately, the next day, was just in this furious anger towards the hospital, and I just continued to blame them that yes, my dad had cancer, but he shouldn't have been diagnosed and die within a few days. So I eventually got a hold of a pathologist who agreed to, um, to do an autopsy on my father. And after we got the results back, I think that's, what, that's, when, that's when it really hit me, that my dad had died from cancer. I would have never imagined that I'd lose my dad at 21. My dad didn't get to go to my college graduation. He didn't get to see me get my first full-time job. And my dad wasn't there when I married my best friend, who he loved so much. And I was really hurt by that. I couldn't believe that God did that to me. Right before my dad's funeral, Amanda and I were in the car driving on the freeway. I can't remember where he'd come from, but I saw the, the hospital that my dad passed away in, in the corner of my eye. And I just remember looking over at her, and I truly believe I felt this at the time. I said, I hate that doctor and I hate that hospital. And I remember Amanda looking at me, and I truly believe that God spoke through her because I believe God needed to meet me right then and there to reassure me why I was really feeling the way I was feeling. She said to me, you don't hate that doctor and you don't hate that hospital. I think you need to remind yourself why you're truly feeling this angry. And you're angry because you lost your father, you lost your dad. I just remember, you know, I was driving, but just wanting to break down because she was right. At the end of the day, I, I felt from God, you've been blaming this doctor and these nurses that tried so hard to keep your father alive. Why can't you just accept the fact that it was his time for him to be with me? And so I started to live life a little differently. I started to rejoice the fact that my dad was in heaven and that he didn't have to go through what we're having to go through right now. He reassured me that what he says in Jeremiah 29 11, that it still holds true. Although the picture may be painted a little differently and maybe there's a few strokes misplaced here and there, that God really does want you to prosper. And I think it's easy for us to stop trusting God, to fall away from God, and to feel like 
if we just stop believing in Him, that things will be easier somehow to just go on. That's not true. What God reminds us is that He's sovereign and that ultimately He knows what's best. We may not understand what He does with His hands, but we can trust His heart. Because God, no matter what He does, no matter what happens in our lives, He loves us and He's worthy of our trust.